So I want to see how your memory's going, and uh, if you can come back to when we spent on Monday, I believe it was. We spent a huge amount of time developing. Okay, what happens when you put more than one angle inside a trigonometric function? We called these the compound angle identities, which significantly expanded your repertoire of identities. These are extension one identities. The tan A plus B identity. We got to after starting with sine, then we moved over to cos, and then we we're like, well, tan is just sine over cos, so you just do the fraction, and then something will turn up. Do you remember? Because we did end up with a fraction. If you're just doing the sum of angles, we call this the sum identity for tan. What goes on the top? What's the numerator? Tan A plus tan B. Nice. So, in order to work out tan of A plus B, independently, you need to be able to have tan A and tan B. What's the denominator? Okay, excellent. So, you remember as well that there's those signs on the top and bottom, they alternate. And just before we move on to the, the next one on the board, you can use this to develop exact values for angles that you didn't have exact values for. Example, and you may actually like to do this with me, you may have done this uh, as one of your examples. 75 degrees. 75 degrees. It's not one that we like memorize. Uh, 75 degrees, it's not 30 or 45 or 60. But if you think about this as a comp if you think about this as a compound angle, you can get it in terms of those exact value pieces. What would you write? Good. So let's actually do this together just so you can jog your memory, right? Get the um, get the gears turning again. If I write 75 as 30 plus 45. Yeah. If we do 10, 30, uh, 10, 30 over 2 plus 60, that would work. 10, 30 over 2 yeah. plus 60. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the short answer is yes, I can. Because 60 will be exactly the value that I know. 30 over 2, though, it's a little harder to work with. You can't do it in much the same way that you can. We get into the double angle identities shortly, but this is certainly a more direct path to it. Because like 30 is 45, also easy. So let's now use the identity over there and expand this out a little bit. What's going to be on my numerator? 10, 30 plus 10, 45. And then on your dominator, I'm just substituting in, right? So 1 minus 10, 30, 10, 45. Can you help me out? 10, 30. 10, 30. 1 over root 3. Huh, how confident are you? Wait, it's Is it 1 over root 3 or is it root 3? Now, you've got, you've got the triangle that you can draw to help you with that. As much as possible, though, develop sort of quick, accessible knowledge that you can rely on to help you get to stuff like this. Tan we don't know as well as sine and cos, but sine, sine 30, you should be able to like involuntarily think of a half when you see that, right? And if you know that that's a half, that tells you what cos 30 is, right? It's the other one, which is? So when you do sine 30 on cos 30, which is what tan 30 is, right? What happens to the twos? They, they cancel, which leaves you with one on root three, yeah? Anyhow, draw the triangle, do whatever you need to, but uh, use as much as possible of your brain rather than sort of appealing to a calculator first, because that's how your brain gets stronger and better at knowing this. 1 over 3, 1045, that's an easy one. That's 1. Okay, that leaves us with 1 minus 1 on root 3 times 1. Yeah, so far so good. What can I do to simplify this a little bit? Because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. Well, get the, uh, the main thing I dislike about this is, is there's fractions on fractions, okay? Probably the most efficient way to get rid of all the fractions on fractions is to choose something to multiply through by, on top and bottom, that gets rid of all of them. What should I choose? Root, root 3 will do it, right? Root 3 will do it. Um, I will come to rationalizing in a second, but let's do it one step at a time. I want to get rid of the fractions on fractions first. That turns that into 1 plus root 3 on the top, yes? What am I getting on the bottom? Root three. Root three. Root three minus one. Okay, now I will rationalize. So I'll multiply by. Yeah. 
So conveniently, I'm just going to leave that as squared. What are you going to get on the denominator? Two. This squared minus this squared, that's three minus one. Two is perfect. I, I'm happy to leave that there. I mean, you could expand the top, but it doesn't really get much neater, does it? In fact, you just get more terms rather than less. Uh, you can go ahead and you can chuck that into your calculator to verify that that is exactly what 1075 is. Okay, wonderful. So we have seen how learning this kind of supercharges what you know about exact values. That's good. When we had tan a plus b on the board, immediately the next thing was we went to, well, what happens if it's the difference of equals instead of the sum? Do you remember what changes? Uh, the minus on the numerator, uh, the plus on the numerator becomes a minus. Yeah, okay, so this becomes a plus, this becomes a minus. You're just swapping the signs, let's just write that down. So sometimes uh, you'll see a textbook and it wants to put both of these formulas into one. So it does something slightly weird. It says tan of a plus or minus b, you see they're just trying to ball these into one thing, equals, now watch, do you see on the numerator the signs match? Pluses go to pluses, minuses go to minuses, yes? So if this is plus or minus, then on the top, tan a tan b, this plus or minus will become plus or minus, right? So you'll see this on the top. The catch is though when you look at the bottom, these signs here, they always mismatch. They're always opposite, right? So to use, whoops, that's an N in there. To use notation in a bit of a weird way, they're like, well, I want the opposite way. So instead of writing plus minus, they write minus plus, okay? Now I'm like, uh, yeah, I kind of know what they mean. Um, you will see it, so that's why I want you to recognize what's going on. They just means the signs alternate. Um, but I think it's a little bit dicey. It's like, well, which is the plus minus? You're kind of asking to confuse yourself. So I generally write them separately. Okay. So we saw that from the first line and from the second line, you can do stuff like this. We also use this result though, and we did an important, where did my orange go? Oh, there it is. We, um, we did some work in coordinate geometry. We went back to coordinate geometry to use that second result to work out. Does anyone remember? What did we do in coordinate geometry? If you've got like a pair of lines, okay, you can work out the angle between those two lines. We said tan theta equals, and there was this big thing in absolute value. So does anyone remember? What it was? M1. 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 Yeah, We're using this one, right? We're using this one. So it's going to be the difference between the two. Yes. On one plus. <laughs> because we simply recognize if you just have a single line, don't worry about pairs of lines. If you just have a single line, then m equals tan theta. If you've got a pair of them, well, you just got two m's and two tans. That's fine. So we saw how we went from here to here and from here to here. This is the reason why we are learning all these trigonometric identities. Every time you learn a new one, it sort of opens up. It gives you access to things you couldn't do before, like getting straight to the angle between two lines. So this morning, we're going to take another one of the tan identities you've learned, and we're going to see a door that it opens. I wonder if you can help me remember this guy. You can use what's on the board. This is just a special version of the top one, right? What am I going to write? Two, two ten theta. Yes. Yeah. Divide by one minus one minus uh, ten <laughs> squared. <laughs> okay. So this is the double angle identity for ten. Okay. This is where we're going to leave off. So <coughs> beautiful space. Uh, I'll get rid of this too. I still haven't told you the title yet, by the way. I will get there. 